This is not a devlog. Let's talk about making games. I don't know. I haven't done one of these for a little while for a number of reasons. One, you can see behind me is that my life is currently in chaos because our landlady decided to sell the house. So we've got to move out and go and find somewhere else. Very disruptive. Yeah, that's annoying. But on the plus side, I've been doing a sponsored stream with Game Maker. They've been kind of helping me out sponsoring the channel every Tuesday. And that's given me a, a, a whole block of time to just focus on getting ahead in the game. The game is making good progress. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But before we go into that, the third reason I haven't done a devlog is that the game I've been making is increasingly becoming a secrets and knowledge game. And that makes it hard for me to know what to show people because it is a game that is full of puzzle chains and I want you to work them out for yourself and I don't want to spoil too much of it. So I think the game's in a good place. It's a strange mix of things, but I think the mix of things works together. If you've never seen this game before, Dirt World is kind of procedural in the sense that you know, it's run based and you have a different experience each time. But rather than having a pre-generated level, the game uh, uses some ideas from blueprints where basically you build the rooms of the level as you go along. So you've got this deck list of rooms, you've got green rooms that have nice stuff in, you've got red rooms that have got not so nice stuff in. And as you go along, you're initially just trying to collect as much treasure as you can, and then you need to go and get back out of the level the way that you came. And that can be difficult because you might have accidentally blown up half the level on the way there or blocked it off in some other way. Oh, I, sorry, gnome. I just killed that gnome. Just throw him down the hole. You can upgrade how many keys you start with, which is the resource that lets you open the doors in the first place. So there's a bit of meta progression of you know, you might start the game with just five keys and then later on you might have 12 keys and that means this level that you're building as you go is going to get bigger and bigger. Gradually expands the range of what you can do and how much stuff you can collect in a run. But it also makes the game harder because the further away you get from that little green portal, the harder it is going to be for you to get back and survive the run. I reached out to a more experienced game maker programmer earlier on in this project, Juju, and he helped me out with some of my physics code. Just kind of spent a day rewriting a bunch of stuff and way better than I could. Uh, I've also been working with Gleb, who made the room loader library. So the, the feature you can see in the game where you print rooms into the game was something I was doing in a really janky way when I first prototyped this game. I was literally kind of saving a grid of like, this block goes here and this block goes here. What Gleb provided me with was a library that did exactly what I needed to do, it to do and more. Um, and then we started working together a bit more. So I got Gleb in helping me with the project, uh, just doing a certain amount of hours each month and kind of going into the parts of the project where I am not technical enough to be able to engineer them in a, in a good way. For example, Gleb re-optimized the game, uh, did a lot of stuff to do with data management and data structures in the game where I was just doing bad practice in the code because I don't have a computer science background. Really just helping me with tooling. So a couple of things I want to shout out specifically for Gleb are the libraries that he's put into the game for me. We've got Room Loader, we've got Lookout, and we've got Figgy. And if you're a Game Maker user, Figgy is, is a new library that Gleb has been working on. And it basically allows you to sort of uh, live config the game while you're playing it and then save those variables. And depending on what game engine you're coming from, that might not be a special thing to you but it is something that didn't exist in Game Maker before. So it's kind of a fantastic set of things. It means I can be playing the game and like mess around with the jump height, mess around with the gravity, you know, economic balancing variables in the game, pretty much anything. That's gonna be really, really helpful. We're not quite at the stage where I need to really think about balancing the game yet because the alpha test that we're running next month is much more just to see what people find fun and what people find confusing. The kind of concept of balance is much more of a kind of deeper into development thing. But what is really important is that 
we need to make it easy to balance when we get there, right? So taking all of those hard-coded variables and putting them in a sensible place so they're easier to tweak, using tools like Figgy so that everything is easier to tweak. And for me, you know, I come from a background where if you wanted to make a game in 2003, it was like RPG Maker, code it yourself from scratch, or level editors for things like Warcraft and Half-Life. So I did the the kind of non-technical route of playing around with those things. But what that did give me an experience of was how tools are built in a big studio. Because if you use something like Blizzard's Warcraft level editor, you will see, okay, this is what it looks like to design content in a tool made for a professional game studio. We've lost a little bit of that since kind of Unity and Unreal have become dominant because it's now it's more a case of everyone in the studio needs to know this engine and then maybe we'll put some kind of sub tools within that. And I think the thing that Gleb has really been helping me with is it's like we're now building the project so that we can iterate faster on this project, right? So the room loader tool, that's like an internal level editor now that lives within this game project. Same with Figgy, further down the line, we'll use that to tweak the game economy, like how difficult certain enemies and traps are and stuff like that. To me, this is really like the loop between game design, like designing the pure gameplay and the development, the technical side. You know, what can you do tooling wise to make your iterations faster? Because your game design will get better quicker the more times you review it and change it. That's kind of what iteration is. If you have the technical tools in place to make that faster for yourself, whether it is, you know, putting all of the data in your project in a sensible place rather than scattered all over the place or using macros or any of these things, then you're going to be in a better position to do good design because you'll be able to work quicker. You'll be able to change things quicker and you're less likely to fall prey to certain things like sunk cost fallacy where you refuse to change something because oh, you, I, I spent so much time on that I don't want to change it. Sometimes you need to you know refactor the game design you need to change things in a sweeping way. Any tools that you can give yourself that make that easier for you are going to make the game better in the long run because you're going to be less reluctant to make those big sweeping changes. So what I'm telling you here is transferable it's not just to do with game maker specifically although I've been very very lucky to find a very good tools engineer to work with me on this project but you can apply some of this thinking to whatever you're working on you know use other people's libraries get help from people on specific parts of your project if it's going to make you design better by allowing you to iterate faster when i started this project in the summer i didn't know how to use github i didn't know how to write a function or use a while loop i know this might be wild to some of you but you know I, i've been using this game engine on and off for about five years and i've been making games for 20 years i just always used to find tools that i found somewhat easy to get on with and i just soldiered through <laughs> And also I want to give a bit of a shout out to the folks who've let me use music as a placeholder. So I decided quite early on with this game that I wanted the music to be all dungeon synth, which is this kind of analog synth music that's kind of a bit brooding and dark ambient really. And I've had a couple of people uh, working with me on that. I'm going to link some stuff in the description where you can go and check out some of the musicians I'm working with and the great thing about that is that they're all sort of part of the same scene so we're looking to do a kind of compilation kind of soundtrack sort of like you got with Hotline Miami where a load of people from the same scene are working together on the same project. I am happy with the direction that the game is going in. I feel comfortable that it's the sort of game that will have an audience not necessarily a massive audience because it's a weird mix of silly explodey jumpy gameplay and quite cerebral lateral thinking puzzles but there are definitely people that like that sort of thing and i also feel like the weird combination of things that went into this game is very me and i kind of care about that in a way i i, I sort of think if you're gonna spend a year or longer on a project, it may as well be something that only you could make. And in a way, I think 
that is the way to do good things and to make things that are interesting to people is to be less kind of chasing what you think other people like and more trying to find a middle ground between what you know someone out there will like and what you personally find interesting in some way i know that doesn't mesh with what a lot of you are chatting about when it comes to like the game dev meta and all of that kind of stuff but i, I just i don't really believe in that very much i think people that make good games make good games because they're very nerdy about a particular thing and they sort of just drill down into it until they become like one of the leading experts on how to make that type of thing and then they do it over and over again you know one thing i've pretty much already decided about the game after this is that the next game i make is not gonna involve controllers or characters moving around i really bit off more than i could chew with this project the types of platformers i do like are things like Spelunky where you can kind of pick up and manipulate objects and stuff. So having all of that requirement of like, oh, we need to do drop through platforms. We need to be able to pick up objects and smash them against the wall. All of that kind of stuff has made this project quite complex. And then in order to fill the game with content and make it interesting and make there be enough secrets for a game of this type, I'm going to have to add a lot, a lot of content over the coming months. And some of that is going to come well a lot of that is going to come after the alpha playtest so we'll do the alpha playtest um i will continue to add content in after that until we get to a point where i'm happy to move to a steam demo then we'll do that and then at some point we're going to go into early access and we will have you know a year of regular content updates of adding more and more stuff to the game but i want to get to a point with the game where it has a beginning and an end you can play the through game through and you can complete it with a safe system and all of that stuff in place and then as the game continues to develop after that point i will flesh the middle out with more stuff uh, the minecraft method if you will the alpha that we're putting out in december isn't going to have loads of progression and story stuff there is going to be a little bit of it and i don't want to go into too much detail on it here but basically uh, these crystals you see up the top are uh, a representation of your boss's approval and your boss is this nasty wizard there are two ways to make him happy one is to bring back treasure and the other one is to bring him back his dinner <laughs> so he has a kind of checklist of all of these objects that you can bring back if you bring him something that he's already had then he gets very unhappy about it so let's do that now let's find him something that he doesn't want and bring it back so i'm pretty sure he doesn't want these berries so i'm gonna take one of those back to the castle and throw it to him and yeah he's he's not happy about that he's really ungrateful if you bring him a gift he doesn't like he blows it up so you're doing a kind of procedural puzzle platformer it is a bit of a score based game it's got that same thing as spelunky or noita where you're running through kind of trying to collect as much treasure as you can in a run but as you do that you'll start to notice little secret things that you can interact with that are going to unlock more things for you and some of those things will just be during that run and once you know them you'll know them for all future runs and you can do them again and some of those things might even be permanent things that allow you to modify your deck of rooms later on so thanks for watching hope you found this interesting if you've got any questions about the project just leave them below uh, and i will try and get back to you i I am um, posting the playtesting alpha to itch in December and the easiest way to know when that happens is to join the Dirt World Discord and there's no Steam page for it yet but there will be at some point I guess. Bye!